As Christians, we take comfort in the passage from Romans 8.28, and we know that in all things God works for the good of those who love him, who, has, who have been called according to his purpose. But we also have to understand that that passage can seem like cold comfort to people who have really been dealt a blow by life, right? Because we don't always see the good that God accomplishes. I think about the story of Joseph from the Old Testament. Remember Joseph? He was child number 11 of 12. Um, and he had kind of a charmed life until, well, because of that favoritism, his brothers ended up hating him. They hated him so much that they sold him into slavery. He was a slave in Egypt. And, and, and while there, his master's wife, Potiphar's wife, liked him and wanted to go to bed with him, but he refused. And so she made up a lie and she said that he tried to rape her. And so then he ended up going to the, to, to the dungeon, to the jail, um, because of a false accusation. And there in jail, he helped a, a cupbearer interpret a dream who was the cupbearer of the king. And he asked the cupbearer when he was being released to remember him before the king, but that cupbearer forgot, and so he languished in prison. Okay, so now you're Joseph's friend, and you visit him in prison, and you say to him, but Joseph, it's okay. We know in all things God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. But what would Joseph's response be? Like, he can't see the good. He, you might be glad that there are bars that separate you from Joseph. He'd be saying, what? That, how can that be? But eventually Joseph did get out. And eventually he interpreted a dream for the Pharaoh um, where there would be seven years of plenty in Egypt and seven years of famine, actually a worldwide famine. And because of that, God was able to provide for people, millions and millions of people, where Egypt literally fed the world during a famine, including Joseph's family including Judah, number four, through whom the line of the Savior would come. Now think about it this way. If all of those things didn't happen to Joseph that landed him in Egypt in that position before Pharaoh, his family would have starved. Millions would have died, including Judah, through whom the Savior of the world would come. In other words, if all that doesn't happen to Judah, or it doesn't happen to Joseph, you don't have a Savior. Now, could Joseph have possibly seen that when he was going through it? No. And that's the thing, we can't always see the good that God has in mind for our lives, but we can see his promise, your future will be good. I think of that when I think of my sister Erica. So my sister Erica was, when I was in high school, was killed by a drunk driver. Um, it was his 10th uh, drunk driving offense. Um, and he was, he was not remorseful at all. And I remember when it happened, I was, I was angry, I was angry at him for getting behind the wheel after he'd been drinking. I was angry with the state for allowing him on the road after nine DUIs. Um, and I probably wouldn't admit it at the time, but I was probably a little angry at God for letting it all happen. We know that in all things God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. Now, I'm not going to say that I see all of the good things that God brought out of that situation, but, but I can see glimpses. I can see some. I know I took great comfort in a passage from Isaiah chapter 57. It says, The righteous perish and no one takes it to heart. The devout are taken away and no one understands that the righteous are taken away to be spared from evil. Those who walk uprightly enter into peace. They find rest as they lie in death. The righteous are taken away to be spared from evil. Who knows? Maybe, maybe God knew that my sister something awful was going to happen in her life and he was trying to spare her from it. Maybe God knew that, that something was going to happen in my sister's life where it would actually lead her away from faith and so he took her um, before that would happen. And if that's the case, then I will be eternally grateful. It took something like this happening for me to have that perspective. Good. Because this happened, it actually drew me closer to my Savior good. Uh, because this happened, it gave my family a chance to live our faith and live our confidence in God's promises. And I can't tell you how many stories of people I've heard who have said that that had an impact on their lives. Good. I, I got to see an example of true forgiveness as I watched my father read a letter in court at the sentencing. And he didn't do what a lot of people do by tearing down the man who did this to his daughter. Instead, he did the seeming seemingly unthinkable, he forgave. He pointed that man to Jesus' cross. He pointed that man to his forgiveness in Jesus. That may have been the only time that man ever heard that in his life. 
Good. I, I know that my sister died in faith and that one day I'll see her in heaven. Good. Let's pray. Hold thou thy cross before my closing eyes. Shine through the gloom and point me to the skies. Heaven's morning breaks and earth's vain shadows flee. In life, in death, O Lord, abide with me. Amen. Hey, what's up everyone? Pastor Mike here from Time of Grace. Thanks so much for checking out this podcast. Uh, we certainly would love this message to reach more and more people. So if you wouldn't mind rating and reviewing this podcast, it would bring it to more people's eyes and we pray this message into more people's hearts. Thanks for your support and we'll talk to you soon.